All right, this is part three on the graphs of sine and cosine. All right, so let's make a little note here. With trigonometric functions, a horizontal translation is called a phase shift. So now we're going to be moving things right and left. And with trig functions, we're just calling those things phase shifts. All right, so if you were to graph y equals um, the sine of x minus pi over 3, right? Remember this x minus a number inside here that moves your graph right and left, right? In this case, it's going to move it to the right, pi over 3 units, right? Just using the, the, the concepts of horizontal translations from previous math classes, all right? This would be a horizontal shift to the right, pi over 3 units. We're just going to call that a phase shift of pi over 3 units to the right, okay? But now, let's generalize up our function even more so, all right? So the graphs of y equals a times the sine of bx minus c, and y equals a times the cosine of bx minus c. So make note of the a, b, and the c in both of them here. They have the following characteristics. The amplitude is the absolute value of a, and the period is 2 pi divided by b. We've already discussed those. Now the phase shift is going to be c divided by b. That's what's going to move it right or left, right? So the phase shift is c divided by b. Now the left and right endpoints of a one cycle interval can be determined by solving the following equations. If you take that argument, bx minus c, remember cosine usually goes, cosine and sine um, usually go between 0 and 2 pi, right, for a one cycle interval. It starts at 0, ends at 2 pi. So now what we're going to say is, well, we want bx minus c to start at 0. So bx minus c equals 0 would be where we would start on the left once you solve this equation for x. To figure out where the one cycle is going to end, you know, the right end point, then bx minus c has to equal 2 pi, right? And you solve this equation for x, and then that's where you're going to end uh, your one cycle. Everybody follow me? So these two equations down here will help you figure out where to start your one cycle and where to end your one cycle um, when you're sketching graphs um, that have the phase shifts. All right, so let's try one. All right, the amplitude would be the absolute value of 1 half, so that would just be a half. The period would be 2 pi over b. b here is 1, right? So the period would be 2 pi. And the phase shift would be pi over 3 is your c, and your b is 1, so pi over 3 over 1 would just be pi over 3. Now this LEP and REP, this is what I'm calling the left endpoint and the right endpoint. Okay, so to get the left endpoint, you go x minus pi over 3, whatever you're taking the sign of here, you want that equal to 0. You solve that for x. So x equals pi over 3. That's where we're going to start. Right endpoint, x minus pi over 3 equals 2 pi. Solve that for x, and you're going to get x equals, so 2 pi plus pi over 3 would be 7 pi over 3. All right, because it would be 6 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. All right, so now you know where to start and where to end your one cycle. So we go out here to 7 pi over 3. Say, all right, that's 7 pi over 3. And we're starting at pi over 3. Now, we need to cut that in half and get the number in between it. And that would be pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 3, which would be 8 pi over 3. And then 8 pi over 3 divided by 2 would be 4 pi over 3. Everybody see where that's coming from? All right, so then pi over 3 plus 4 pi over 3 would be 5 pi over 3. Divided by 2 would be 5 pi over 6. All right, now we need halfway between these two. So 4 pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 3 would be 11 pi over 3. And then divide that by 2 would be 11 pi over 6. All right, and the amplitude would be, the amplitude is 1 half. So we plug the one half and the negative one half, all right? So normally we start at the origin, but remember we're starting at pi over three, all right? So we're gonna be hitting here. It's gonna go up to five pi over six, all right? At four pi over three, it goes through the x-axis. 11 pi over six, we're down at negative a half. And at seven pi over three, we're back to zero. And then it continues. But there's your one cycle. Right? The graphs almost always look the same once you blow them up big enough and get your scale um, appropriately labeled. Okay, so let's try one more. 
All right, so the amplitude here would be 5. Period would be 2 pi over 4, which would be, everybody know, pi over 2. Phase shift would be, all right, now notice here, your C is what number? Your C is negative pi, right, because it's 4x plus pi. So your C would be a negative pi, so your phase shift is negative pi over 4. Or we would just say pi over 4 units to the left. All right. All right, left endpoint. So we take 4x plus pi, set that equal to 0, solve for x, x equals negative pi over 4. Right endpoint, take 4x plus pi, set that equal to 2 pi, solve for x, x equals pi over 4. Okay, so we're starting at negative pi over 4. We're ending at pi over 4. Halfway between 0 and pi over 4 would be pi over 8. Halfway between negative pi over 4 and 0 would be negative pi over 8. We're going up to 5 and down to negative 5. All right, it's cosine. So cosine usually starts up here, right? So we're going to be here. It's going to go through the, there. It's going to hit negative 5, pi over 8. So there are five points and you sketch the graph and that's it everybody see that all right so the only thing that we've left off is the idea of um, tossing on something like say plus one okay so all of this plus one well what do you remember um, from your previous math classes, what that plus one does to your graph. That's right, it takes your original graph and moves everything up one unit. So instead of being here on the x-axis, you'd be up here at one, and all these points would be moved up one. So it'd be, it'd be going between um, negative four and positive six is where your graph would be. All right? follow me? All right, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to, uh, to ponder uh, and... Um, so that's it for the, the graphing of sine and cosine functions. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.